K-pop does get a lot of hate because of certain stereotypes and the stereotypes include many of the artists actually not being artists and instead they are puppets because most of these groups are actually trained and put together by the agency instead of organically formed and then there's a lot of these companies actually enslaving their their talents most of these artists actually don't have a voice in terms of creative direction they are continuously asked to go on a diet so that they can maintain a certain weight they are given songs to sing clothes to wear and they don't have a choice over it but it's rare that somebody actually speaks against it and even rarer for somebody to speak against it and actually offer valid arguments so when i read bang shiyuk's interview in time magazine it was refreshing number one time magazine actually bothered to ask these questions and number two, Bang Shiyuk actually offered a valid argument, counter arguments against the stereotypes. The first question, and I think probably the most important one, is the perception that most K-pop artists are actually manufactured. So they're not actually artists. They are, they are puppets or products because companies actually get them very early in their career and then they are trained and molded into a form that will make money for the company instead of molded or nurtured to become to become artists and bang shiyuk said and i quote first i believe in the west there is a deeply embedded fantasy of the rock star a rock star acts true to their soul and everyone must accept it as part of their individuality and that's the only way good music will come in reality Devoting a long time to honing and training music-related skills is a tactic and used in many professional art worlds. And that is true because there are many forms of art which is simply performed and it is accepted that the one performing it isn't the one who created it. There's ballet, there's dancing, there's theater, and there's movies. And all of these actors, if you see them acting, you know that they weren't the ones who wrote the script. You know that they weren't the ones who directed it. Sometimes they are the ones who directed it, but you get the point. But you will not see them as puppets. You know that, this, that their art is actually acting and a ballet dancer's art is actually dancing. But when you see them on in movies, you know that it doesn't make them any less of an artist just because it wasn't them who wrote the script or who directed the movie. You know that they are actors and that is their craft, that is their, their art. And the same thing goes with a ballet dancer. You know that when she goes on stage and she dances, that is not her choreo choreography, but it doesn't make her any less of an artist. So in terms of a singer, then you know that when somebody sings and when, when somebody performs on stage, it doesn't make her less of an artist just because she wasn't the one or he wasn't the one who wrote the music that, that he's singing or dancing to. I know that others will actually argue that music in, as a form of art is actually different. It's, it's not, music by itself is not a performance art. And that is true. That is true that music by itself is not a performance, performance art. It is art by itself whether or not it is performed if there is a song then that's music then performance itself is an art by itself as well that has to be judged i guess or looked at by itself so there's music and then there's the performance and those that are performing isn't less of an artist than the ones that are creating i know that the succeeding argument would be the way that these companies in Korea hone or train the talents because they are being trained to become money-making machines instead of being artists. And in Bang Shiyuk's uh, explanation, the one thing that is probably setting him apart from others is that he does not dictate what kind of message or what kind of music the, his talents or his artists are going to produce. His only role is to hone it so that they can make money out of it. But the material, the raw material that will come out is actually coming from the artists. And one clear example of that is the Love Yourself, Love Yourself message of BTS. That has been the consistent message that BTS has been delivering since their inception as a group. And he said that that wasn't his, it wasn't his idea and it wasn't his message. It was the group's message. And it is the same 
principle that he's applying to all his talents that whatever it is that you are going to do you number one you need to have a message you need to have some sort of consciousness in about something else and he doesn't dictate what that may be so it is bts's choice not to talk about politics and it is bts choice to talk about their personal struggles and this is the theme that they they chose to carry on for the rest of their careers and he wants the same thing for all of his talents he doesn't want to dictate whatever that message may be that is fine as long as it is as it is true and honest he would rather have a juvenile message rather than a profound message but that be a lie so i think that very very clearly dictates his role as a company it's about giving them a chance to grow and then he would come in and see okay then let's look at how we're going to make money out of it because believe it or not they need money <laughs> to continue what it is that they are doing the second one is fighting the system there is always this talk about um, most of Western artists actually rebelling against their their agencies because or their companies because these labels actually dictate to the artist what what they are supposed to sing or what they are supposed to do. And number one, I think we need to remember that South Korea's entertainment industry is a very young industry, much much younger than than uh, North America. But if you actually look at history, it's actually following the same tra trajectory. But even it's in its youth, uh, Bang Shiyuk said that they have gone through several revolutions already, even in their youth. But there are certain things that is culturally embedded in how we do things in Asia. Number one, it is natural for Asians to be more respectful to their elders and authority. That's just cultural it's nothing you know that's just how we were brought up this is our culture it's part of what makes us Asians and so that sort of dictates or not dictates but forms a certain kind of culture within a company when you're working for a company but even so even in North America there are a lot of artists who actually are being influenced by their agency I don't know if you know about the the decade-long struggle or fight um, of Lil Wayne against his label. He wasn't able to come out with an album for so long because he was just sick of being dictated by the label and what he was supposed to do. There's Kelly Clarkson, there's Taylor Swift, so many of them. So many of them actually went out and actually talked about how they are struggling against their own agency. So it is proof eternal that it does happen even in North America. And so it doesn't make it more evil just because it's happening in Asia. It is not to say that there are no agencies or no companies in, in Japan or Korea or other parts of Asia that are just really using their, their um, talents and their artists to make money. But it doesn't mean that all companies are like that. Next is the message of BTS. Going back to their main message, which is love yourself, he made it clear that it wasn't the, the company's decision. It wasn't the company's idea to carry this message. This is entirely BTS. And so their only role is to, number one, create a continuous narrative so that whenever the boys come back, because they grow up as people, of course, they grow up as musicians and they evolve. And the only concern that they have, their job as an agency, is to make sure that there is a concrete narrative behind the message so that whenever they come back with a new material that sounds different, there is a justification so that the fans that they have or the fans that they gain, they don't lose it. You're, it, does, it doesn't feel like you're watching a movie who, and a movie that keeps on changing the story. You have a narrative that you follow and you hold on to. And I think I've discussed this in one of my past videos, but a, a, a narrative is very important. And Bang Shiyuk recognizes that because the narrative is what people will remember. It is the emotions of the narrative that people will cling on to. So that way, way, way after BTS is done as a group, they're probably... I don't know, when they get married and their grandfathers and people will forget who they are, but the narrative will remain. It's the same way narrative with such great stories like Les Miserables and even Disney characters that it carried on way after the original artists that were playing those roles are gone. 
the narrative stays on. So those are, I think, the most important points that he mentioned and that people need to understand. I do think that people need to understand that the, this highly criticized aspect of K-pop being manufactured artists isn't entirely true. And I'm not saying that it is groundless. I did came up with a video, and I think I published it uh, last Friday, about the reasoning, the reasoning behind that criticism. Why do people feel that artists or singers that don't sing their own songs aren't actually artists? I gave a, um, an explanation on where that is coming from. But it is not always the case. There are a lot of artists who, a lot of singers in particular, who actually have gone w through their entire career not singing their own songs and no one can argue that they are artists. Whitney Houston comes to mind. She never wrote any of her materials, but I, it's very clear. She's one of the greatest vocalists of all time and, and her, her position as an artist, one of the greatest artists of all time is very, very solid. And then the next is this issue about this agencies controlling their artists. Yes, it does happen in Asia, it does happen in Korea, Japan, Philippines, Thailand, China, but it happens also in North America. So don't make it appear as if it is even more evil just because it's happening in Asia. In fact, if you look at the culture, it's probably less of an evil in Asia. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, artists need to be empowered more and they need to be given more control over their creatives. But we go back to what I said earlier, just because some artists, some singers prefer to just perform doesn't make them less of an artist. That is their craft and they have to be respected for it. So check out the other video about the explanation on, on why the, where this criticism is coming from and I'll see you next time.